we've heard about uh, enterprise e ecosystem and vendors becoming sort of an extended arm uh, of, of enterprise. Um, you know, Chandra, uh, I know, you know TC has been very successful over the years. Uh, how are you going about doing that? I think it's very, very important because um, this relationship, uh, you know, is a very, very crucial relationship. So when you are uh, embarking upon transformation projects, for example, you may have uh, vendors working very closely with your organization, but you can't have uh, two different cultures. At that time, it's so important that you're all aligned yep. and work under a single badge. So I think the vendors becoming extensions of uh, customer organizations for large contracts mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, is a given. I mean, I don't think that uh, it needs any debate. But I also want to touch upon a couple of more points um, with regard to what else is important. Okay. The first and foremost thing, um, we talked about um, um, transparency, okay? Uh, whether the customer gets to see everything in a transparent way, that's very important. The second thing that uh, Sandeep pointed out was whether the vendor will push back the customer. That's equally important. But the third thing is that it's also very important that the customer gets a perspective of whether he's going to get what is being promised. And that's extremely critical. So I think if you see all of this, um, when the, the vendor organization becoming an extension of the customer organization um, will make it easier to bring all the three elements together. Byron. We, um, do, you, do you see, I mean, do you, you work with a number of uh, vendors uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, you might have, you know, your own captive also, but do you, do you really see that we have evolved to that stage now? Oh, absolutely. I've got about 40% of our overall organization wears a different badge. And you can't really think about running an effective organization if you exclude them from your strategy, if you exclude yeah. them from your capability and how you deliver value to, um, value to, to customers. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's, there's a lot of challenges in that, in that, you know, historically I don't think there's been enough present from kind of executive management mm -hmm. coming to the, the locations. I, yeah. I recently um, visited a location where we had several hundred people and in seven years they hadn't had anyone show up from, you know, corporate headquarters from executive management. And there's a thirst for these people, both at the, the leadership level and the individual level to connect with the business. So I have, I have offshore providers that have, uh, and, and, and team members that have been with us much longer than half the staff back in the U.S. Um, you know, DNB started Cognizant in 1994. So we've, and there's people mm -hmm. that have been supporting us for, you know, a dozen years through some of those uh, relationships. So you know, I, I think it's important that, that you're here, that they hear the story, they hear the strategy, they hear how you think about your customers, where you're taking your business. I think the other thing that's critical, and I think it's one of the changes that we need to see in the industry is, we need to improve the level of collaboration across the offshore providers and the company. Yeah. So there's very little, there's very formal points of communication in a lot of these situations around projects or this mm -hmm. or that. And we think within our organizations, we think about how do we build communities and portals for people to exchange ideas. And so often that does not include uh, our partners, which I think has to change in the, the long run. The other thing that has to change is we have to get better collaboration across the vendors. Um, mm -hmm. I have a situation uh, just this week. I was meeting with someone that had this fabulous capability uh, that could really help my business uh, fundamentally in a lot of different ways. But because of another outsource arrangement I have with my data center, I can't get that capability into my data center. And so now I'm kind of sitting here trying, and it would break the, our, our contracts and all the rest of it. So now I've got to try to figure out, can I get this done by hook or crook? But more and more, you know, I, I'm thinking different. I'm thinking about different ways to have com people come together to provide services to us. Historically, I was the guy who, or, or the firm was the person who sat there and coordinated all of these one-off relationships. Everything came back to the firm. And in the future, I think there's several scenarios that I look at where the firms come together to provide a service to me. I think it'll be a higher quality service and a more valuable service. I just don't see that happening in the marketplace, but I see how that would create value for. Um, for the firm, and I think it's something that, as we think about the industry evolving, it's going to have to figure out. Hmm. But, but do you, do you think um, uh, you know, as as uh, the vendors become extended arm, uh, there will be a fundamental shift in in times of types of business model 
or would there be, uh, you know, for example, we are seeing that some of the companies are saying, uh, you know, we will take success fee. You know, I mean, there's a fixed fee element and then there's a success fee element. So that the risk and reward are kind of shared. So do you? I, I think, I mean, some of it comes back to the readiness of the organization and people often forget, you know, so they try to come up with this edge talk, up, this boilerplate of here's mm. how we deal with, with customers. Organizations are at very different levels of readiness and depending on the function, the marketplace is at a different level of, of, uh, of, of capability. I think it's something that is, uh, you know, people just, just don't, don't catch. Um, from a, a metrics perspective, low readiness organizations are very focused on the financials. It's one of the main drivers, right? So we're like a, you know, at least in my experience, I'm a third, fourth generation of kind of outsourcing things. We've been doing it for a dozen years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it ties me back to a lot of the learnings I've had, you know, to, to some of the points that were made here. Focus on the, the big outcomes. Make mm -hmm. sure that you're driving those. Try to stay away from some of the, uh, some of the minutia. Focus on the business value, right? So what are the five outcomes I need this year? Yeah. Right? That, those five outcomes you will typically will not find buried in, the, in all the SLAs and everything else because, you know, the outcomes are made up of, you know, 40 different little SLAs that I have. But trying to provide that level of clarity is incredibly important. Um, you know, what I, want, what I want people to and organizations to do is, you know, sit down in January and say, what makes this an exceptional year? What is, let's define a hit the ball out of the park year. That activity almost never happens, right? That you just don't have that, that, that level of, of concourse and discussion with a lot of the providers. And I think, you know, as you look at mature organizations, they're going to continue to move down that path. Um, and it's certainly the advice that you're starting to get from, you know, folks like KPMG and other providers saying, look, you've got to make this thing a little bit simpler. Mm.